Chapter 6. Triple-Sided Coin Travis opens the door of the pawn shop in town and waves me in ahead of him. The bell on the door announces our arrival as it hits the glass. The dusty smell of the place triggers a bunch of memories. Good times. Together times. When Dad and Grandpa would take Travis and me out looking for coins. Numbers and money are always something Travis and I can do well. So we took it fast. Grandpa loved the dustiest stores best because they were the ones that have uncracked rolls of coins in the backs of their safes. When the store owners would trade the old rolls for the new bills, we'd open them at home to see what was inside. Sometimes we'd find a buffalo nickel, a mercury dime, or an Indian head penny. It was like a little bit of Christmas. Being here makes me ache to go back in time. The man behind the counter doesn't say hello. He rolls a toothpick back and forth in his mouth with his tongue. In one way, it was completely impressive, and in another, the grossest thing I've ever seen. Travis rests his fingertips on the glass counter, looking down into the case filled with coins. You need something? The man doesn't talk that way when mom says you're supposed to talk to customers. I want to buy some coins, Travis says. Oh yeah? Yeah. Travis brushes his chin and his knuckle, something he does when he is nervous. The guy reaches up and takes the toothpick out of his mouth. He uses it to point at Travis. Do you have money or are you all talk? Travis does this. Travis does what dad said never to do. He shows him his money and not money like a regular person, a roll of money wrapped in an elastic band. The guy's eyes widen. Then he asks, looking for something special? I want Liberty coins. You got any? He takes out several coins. One is a mercury dime with a head that looks like it has wings for ears. I remember those, I say, like the one daddy has in his wallet. Travis turns them over in his hand. Nice. You have any anything more unusual? The guy's eyebrows jump. He reaches into a drawer. This is unusual, but it'll cost you big. I don't mind paying for something special. <clears throat> okay then, he says, this one is special. He puts a penny on the counter. Travis picks it up and his eyebrows bunch up. This is smaller than other pe pennies. The guy nods, it is a rare find. Travis glances at me and then he turns toward the guy. How much? Well, the guy says, if you know anything about coins, you know that a coin with a flaw in it is far more valuable than a regular coin. Something isn't right with it and it's worth more? Like I said, Travis said, how much? The guy tilts his head to the side. Well, normally I'd ask for 80, but I'll charge you, say, 75. Travis smiles. Even I remember how dad used to tell us never to smile when you get a number. Never, even if it's the best number in the world, and here he is smiling like he won the lottery. I would try to look serious enough for the both of us. Well, that's really generous of you. 75 bucks for a penny? That's been dipped in nitric acid? The guy's smile falls off his face. I bet the police would be interested in a little bit of fraud. Now listen, Travis interrupts. Look, I wasn't born yesterday. Stop messing with me. Travis points at the coin in the case and he has, that has a walking woman wrapped in a sheet with the sun's rays behind her. It is beautiful. That 1933 walking Liberty half dollar? How much for that one? Well, that one is in really fine condition. In fact, just tell me how much, Travis says, leaning in, palms on the glass. 45. 36 and you throw in the mercury dime for my little sister. I look up quick. For me? Then I do the math. Yup, he is following dad's rule of offering 20 cents less than what they offer. But Travis threw in something extra. The guy squints. 40. Travis nods. Done. He slaps the money on the glass. Outside the store, Travis holds the dime toward me. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it so much. Thank you, Travis. You are the best. It looks a little sad staring at the coin. You know, Grandpa was born in 1933. 
That's why I chose these coins. They were both minted in that year. I look down at the mercury dime and its date, wishing people could last as long as coins. When we get into the car, Travis says, did you see how that guy in there took me for a fool? Trying to rip me off. Remember, Allie, when people have low expectations of you, you can sometimes use it to your advantage. Then he looks me right in the eyes and points at my nose. As long as you don't have low expectations of yourself. You hear? I nod again, but I think to myself that it's hard not to these days.